Hi, it's Robert Mitchell of the 2012 Toronto International Film Festival. We're at Midnight Madness for the world premiere of No One Lives. Hi, welcome back to Midnight Madness. We're very excited that you're back here with your new film. Thank you, thank you. This is my favorite audience, the favorite city, so I'm so glad to be finally made it back 11 years. Hi, how are you doing? I'm well, thank you, how are you? Good, welcome back to Midnight Madness. We're very excited that you're here again. I'm excited to be here. I love Midnight Madness, it's so much fun. It's when all like, you know, we just let everything go from all the tension and stress of the day and hustle and bustle, and we just have a good time. Midnight, and we let it all go. Yes, yeah, so I, I love, I am, you know, the Midnight Madness kind of audience myself. So I love every kind of, you know, gore and, you know, action, horror, packed movie. But if movie making is a hard job, so I have to sacrifice myself for a couple of years, and, you know, I have to be the hardest working people on the project. So. Uh, when I think about you know me doing it, I am not that interested in the, doing the movie with just blood and guts and action. It always has to be the character and emotion. So this is yes, it is a bloody you know extreme movie, but it's very twisted love story, very psychological. That's what grabbed me when I read the script. Hey, how's it going? Man, it's going great. You're pretty excited to be here in Toronto at this film festival. I am stoked to be at the TIFF. It is an incredible honor, and it's the, like I said, it's my first movie. So it's like, that's how you start. So I kind of set the bar a little high. So hopefully it'll be all right. You know, I haven't seen it yet. So this will be the first time I see myself die. So I'm, I don't know how I feel about that, but uh, hopefully I won't scream too loud. Well, as you were saying, it's your first movie. What was that experience like to be on set and do uh, your first movie? Um, it was exciting, tedious would probably be a word, repetition, repetition, repetition. Um, I'm a naturally emotional guy. My face moves a lot when I talk, so on the camera you have to do the exact same thing from different angles, so that was a little bit of a challenge, but uh, all in all I was, up, I was up for it and had a lot of fun. Can I ask you uh, your character in this film? Uh, my character in this film is, um, you know, she's another really, you know, misunderstood. Yeah, she's she's a tough bitch, um, and I, I like tough bitches. I, I'm one inside, deep down. <laughs> um, and uh, she's on, you know, she's a she's a survivor. Till till maybe she's not. I don't know. Maybe you might know the the title of the film. Oh, yeah, this title. Uh, maybe it gives it up. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. I'm not going to give it away. But. Uh, yeah, I, I like I like this character. She's she's got a bit of part of a me in it. Can you tell me a little bit about your character in the film? Yeah, uh, Ethan. To put him in one word, uh, he's big. Uh, not really a talker. He's more uh, he's more of a thinker. But for some reason, the thought from the brain to the mouth never really happens. Um, he's not a specially good fighter, which you kind of think he would. He wears sleeveless shirts and has a mohawk, so that kind of says this guy can fight. But a really good fighter. He tries hard, though. Um, his brother's the boss, so he's kind of like that big follower, you know what I mean? He's uh, some Frankenstein qualities to him a little bit, but uh, he's got a good heart for a, you know, a murderous killer. It's a very physical role, uh, role from what I've been seeing in the stills and whatnot. How, did you, how do you mentally and physically prepare for such a role? Uh, I, I just don't think about it before I do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just treat the bruises later with arnica, and that's my secret. Ar you're doing this in New Orleans, it's hot, you know, and you're out in the elements. Yeah, I, I went to the doctor a few times, yeah, uh, during the process. And and I love it. It's it's war wounds, you know. Uh, I don't have tattoos. I have scars, and they are my tattoos. Yeah, they just, there are stories behind them all, and I enjoy it. And this is, I, I believe, that uh, very unique experience that the audience is going to have, because this character driver he's evil he's gonna kill everybody but somehow he's very attractive and I don't want to I don't want to spoil but the, this is like I don't know I haven't seen this kind of character maybe Hannibal Lecter you know he's, he's an evil character but somehow you, you're attracted and you love him so uh, this guy is easy to say is you know he's a Jason Bourne meets Hannibal Lecter so he has tons of technique and ideas to torture and kill people and but he's doing it all for love 